Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I want to begin by attempting to rescue that derelict probe that we left without any solar panels. And I got suggestions in the comments to slap a solar panel on it. We don't have any of the always open solar panels available. Uh, these will be way too big for the probes. But we do have the emergency solar panels that I have here. And I guess what can happen is that with Kerbal Attachment System, the Kerbal can grab one of these and place it on a probe, though I'm not sure about that. But first let's attempt to get a little bit closer to our probe while we're still in this orbit. Initially I wanted to transfer over to Gilly and send a probe down to Gilly to fulfill that contract, but since we're here already so close to the orbit of this other probe, I decided that we should try to rendezvous with it. So the first thing is to get closer to it, and so uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of a correction burn here. Uh, actually, one one item that I would like is target. There we go. Okay. So well, actually, our distance to target is not that bad, huh? I mean, when you look at the this intended correction. Well, unfortunately, that distance would be over here, but I guess maybe doing this correction isn't so good because it actually brings us further away. For some reason, this closest approach distance doesn't match anything that the maneuver node screen is showing me. That's why I'm confused. Initially, I thought the closest I could get without a maneuver was this 200 or so kilometers, but this is telling me something different. Our probe is in sight. It's just right there. Maybe I should test whether the Kerbals can actually do this thing. Um, probably need to turn the craft around a bit. I want to make sure everything is in good lighting. Okay. Alright, Podzer. Oh, okay, let's close that. Alright. Well, Pons is clinging on very nicely, but I don't think we can go this way. We're going to have to pull him out and make him go around that way. So, flaw in the design here. Also, the craft itself seems to be not fully stable yet. Seems to be wiggling about a bit, if you can see. Let me have Pods aboard for a sec. I don't know what that oscillation is about. I'm going to use Time Warp Trick to stabilize. It should be stable anyway, I don't know why. Uh, it still seems to be having a little bit of a roll. Or is that... no, no, it's stable. No, no, it's still rolling. You can see from the nav ball. Very slowly, though. Alright, well, we'll risk it. Ponzer. So yeah, I've never used Kerbal Attachment System to do something like this. So I don't even know if it works. But I will take people's word for it and give it a go. Might be that it's only the always open solar panels that work with this though. No, just extend panels. Can't grab it like this. Okay, back away. I don't know, maybe... Well, these rechargeable battery packs have this open transfer GUI. So maybe they're compatible. Uh, that would extend the battery life of a probe, but not give it uh, the battery life it needs. I don't think that's enough. No, I, I don't think it'd be enough to make the really weird orbits that they require from us. They're requiring some pretty extreme orbits. So I don't know guys, um, probably didn't understand exactly how to grab the stuff through Kerbal Attachment System. So for now I'm gonna proceed with the Gilly mission. Uh, there, there were other suggestions about how to fix this. I don't really have a lot of the Kerbal Attachment System parts on here either. No radial little uh, pipe joints or anything like that. 
Okay, I've got an off-plane transfer with Gilly, uh, costing 221 meters per second. What this means is I'm not matching inclinations with Gilly. You can see uh, I'm trying to hit it directly at my ascending node in order to avoid matching inclinations. And so uh, we're, we still got a relative inclination of 12.5, which is actually more than what we've got right now. Um, so we actually increase our inclination, but we end up uh, getting a Gilly Gilly encounter at 77 kilometers if we do this right, which is a little bit tricky because, again, I don't have RCS to do really touchy stuff, and this is going to be a very precise maneuver. So, yeah, just hitting it at our ascending node, and that's because I didn't want to go all the way around to correct my inclination, and the inclination correction would have to happen pretty close to Eve anyway, so it would have costed quite a lot. So we're going to save some of that. Alright, well, we're going to leave our probe behind. We've got two probes left. We could slap a... Well, no, we can't slap. I still... I mean, I wish I had figured out how to put a solar panel on them, because then we could have used one of these probes to uh, create a satellite around EVE. We've got those two satellite contracts. But, you know what? On the other hand, maybe it'd be best to... Uh, send a more dedicated satellite. We could do some scanning of EVE. So let's say we put something in this orbit first uh, with uh, let's say ScanSat and uh, Carbonite Detector and all that and then bring it down so it can do proper detecting. That wouldn't be too bad because it's almost in a polar orbit. Now this big one out here that's not gonna be very useful honestly. But what we could do is it's in such a loose orbit so far out that we could transfer it to something else because it's not like it's going to be tightly bound to EVE at all. So that's a thought. No indication yet. Yep, nope. there we go. Gilly periapsis, maybe we can get a little bit closer. Fifty, th uh, 50 kilometers should be fine. Okay, so we've got a transfer to Gilly. Not too much of a change in our orbit, so that's good. Alright. So let's head out there. I'm sure I can do a Gilly landing in the time that the probes have power. Uh, they have a lot of Delta V after all, so I could just force a landing. It's possible that we could get a probe in this very inclined orbit right now. I mean, now once we hit periapsis, we could release it and get it into this inclined orbit because it'll be relatively similar. Now, I don't think I can do a temperature scan around Gilly. I don't know. We have to do some science in orbit. We'll have to see. I might have to get a Kerbal to EVA for a sec in order to do that. So yeah, let me just uh, very quickly, let me have uh, Chadbro EVA here, and he can do a quick EV report. Alright, uh, keep that data bored. Experiments, uh, no, actually, can't be stored in the Kerbitat. Well, okay, we can have uh, Chadbro transfer over to the science lab, I'm sure they can be stored there. Okay. Now let's transmit the data. God, I have to remember that, well, no, let's move Chadbro back to the ha Curvitat. Um, so Chadbro, because he doesn't show up there, and I want to remember that I have a Kerbal here. Let's just transfer there. Okay. All right. So now we release a probe and let it do its thing. Guess the best thing to do would be well, it's only three minutes. It's not gonna be. Hmm. Wondering how long it's gonna take it to get to the surface. That's all. But yeah, I think it's all right to release a probe right now. Okay, two hours. 
doesn't seem to matter whether SAS is on or off. For now, I'll keep it off. Let's just have a crash course. Oh, let me uh, test how long it's going to take. So, oh, that's two hours right there. Hmm. Let's crash as quickly as possible, shall we? Well, oh, Eve is still visible from out here. It looks like our current course will... Well, no, we're clearing the... the mothership. So that should be okay. Okay, let's see about this. Oh, we're still not in orbit. Wow. Okay, get into orbit. Suicide burn countdown is not good enough. One hour would technically work, but how about we burn towards the surface? Yeah, that's what I want. Um, try and make it not in the dark. There we go. So now we would be on an escape trajectory, except we're going to be crashing. That's that's what I wanted. Oh, did we get the chief? Okay, we achieved orbit around Gilly. Okay, good. Because we're no longer in orbit around Gilly. And I want to make sure we hit that contract already. So, uh, just a reminder, of course, the Explorer X is not in orbit around Gilly. It just did a flyby and it's continuing outward. Didn't bother to waste the Delta V for that. Okay, here we are coming in at about 60 miles an hour. Actually, that's not right because, well, it is still about 60 miles an hour. I was on orbit though. Okay, have we landed? Yes, we have. We have landed on Gilly. Usually creates a hop or two, but here we can. No, 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 not toggle display. What are you doing? Ah, we can't get a seismometer reading? What's the situation here? Scan from Gilly surface. Well, anyway, I can transmit that. It's going to take uh, quite a chunk of electric charge. I don't even know if I can get the the seismometer reading transmitted away, but right now it doesn't seem to want to do it. It's got a little tiny reading of gravity, that's important stuff, but can't make it do it. Let's see if I can uh, get a temperature scan right above the surface of Gilly. Yeah. Okay, so we got that as well. Uh, that's quite a hop actually. Let's just get into orbit. Heck, it's it's heading up anyway. Well, it's not gonna make it to apoapsis with a charge, so I just better just seems clear of the surface, but it really isn't. Oh heck, let's just throw it out. There we go. Okay. Anyway, this probe is done with. Interesting little resulting orbit. Let's go back to the Explorer X. So the Gilly contract is done. The Eve contract is not because we didn't manage to get it to transmit data from the surface. Got to the surface though. Um, lost its antenna, that's why. And so the last thing we could do with this last probe is potentially put it into one of the satellite orbits. So I'm going to try and plot to put it into this, even though this orbit is the one that is most useful for, uh, I don't know, maybe we could uh, try and get to this really wide orbit which is completely not useful. 
that's gonna take some doing. Let me let me take a look at plotting for that and I'll see how it goes. Okay, I think this orbital adjustment will bring us close enough to that orbit at this point here. It's a pretty big difference, but I think our probe can correct that inclination. Tough call though. But that's probably as close as we're going to get without actually doing a lot more maneuvering with the Explorer X. And I want to conserve the Explorer X's fuel. After all, it cons consumes a whole lot more. So, yeah, let's go with this plan. It'll take a day to get to the point. We'll actually have to swing by EVE again. We're in, we're in a safe orbit. We have a periapsis of a thousand kilometers, so no big deal there. We're going to be boosting our orbit even higher. Uh, may or may not be useful for transfer back to Kerbin. Probably not that useful. I'm thinking that the next destination for Explorer X is just to swing by Kerbin to pick up some fuel. But not sure about that. Could go all the way out to Duna or something. It'd be convenient to send it over to Duna because we're going to have to resupply Duna anyway. And so we could just send an extra ship for the Explorer X as well. Plus the probes. I guess we'll send a probe pack of some kind to uh, get it stocked up on probes. We'll see. It'll probably depend on what contracts we've got. Okay, let's, uh, let's swing by Eve and see what we can do. I think I remember somebody saying that the seismometers were a little bit more complicated now because of one mod or another. Maybe that's what I encountered on Gilly. I'll have to look into that. Forget if this that was this or whether that was a different series. I think it was probably this series. That's where I get confused. So many mods, so many different series. Got to figure out what's changing what. Okay, well this is sort of a rough estimate of trying to get close to that orbit. So, let's see what we're doing here. Yep, I think that's that's touching it. And that's what we need. The rest of the probe is going to have to do. Alright, let me try and plot what it has to do. Okay, I think that's a pretty good first approximation. Cost 505, let's say, meters per second. Pretty good match. Hope it's going in the right direction. But, uh, yeah. I think this will be okay. Be interesting to watch this orbit change. Make sure Smart ASS doesn't go all awry. Well, we can see that it is going in the right direction. Sending node, adjusting quite properly. Go, oh, I've lost it now. Ah, not bad for 500 meters per second or so. I think you'll agree. Now, how far off are we? 0.3 right now. Oh, reach the designated orbit around EVE. Hold on. Yeah, there's a satellite. That is powered antenna. Ah, oh, it doesn't, uh, because it doesn't have a solar panel, it doesn't count. Ah. Oh. Okay. So it doesn't count, no solar panel. Couldn't figure out how to attach one. Alright, but it doesn't seem too bad on the Delta V, so it looks like we could easily put a probe in this orbit again. Can we log temperature from out here? Nope, of course not. Okay, so that's a bust. It's sort of depressing. I was hoping to at least get this one. But yep, solar panel necessary. 
All right. Let's just go back to the Space Center for a sec. So we did complete the Gilly contract and we've got quite a lot of funds now. And we've also got quite a lot of science. We could in fact uh, unlock one of these tiers as well as one of those. And I think the one I'm going to go for... Hmm... So those, that solar array isn't too bad an idea. Maybe it's just focus on these. Is there anything pressing on this tier? The gravioli would be nice. Some of these new parts, I'm not even sure how I would use, but uh, RTGs, well, that, that goes without saying. Actually, that's very tempting. Very tempting. Curved solar arrays I've never used before. Maybe that's a thing too. Well, I mean, if we unlock these curved solar arrays in this RTG, probably I don't need to bother with this one. For now, at least. Okay, I'm gonna go with that theory. Ooh, there's more. Hmm. Well, one thing at a time. And with the RTGs and curved solar arrays, I think that would be a good pair up with the ion engines. So I'm going to go with that. So we've spent our science. Let us proceed to the contract screen. Not a whole lot of new stuff, actually. We've got Explore Jewel. Well, that's so simple that I might as well pick it up. Um, build a new orbital station around Minmus. Pretty straightforward. But we've got a lot of stuff on our hands already. But heck, why not? I'm sure we'll get around to it at some point. So we've got a lot of contracts. Really, I suppose we should just finish up the EVE stuff. So let me try and build a custom satellite that would be able to do some useful work around EVE instead of these little probes. And also I need to build a probe that can withstand EVE's uh, heating. So the re-entry heat. Let me go to the VAB and try some stuff out. Okay, so what we have here is the general purpose probe and what I want to do with this is first of all uh, scan for carbonite, I want to get altimetry readings, and I want to scan for biomes. Of course it's still 0.25 so we don't have a whole lot of biomes, but uh, altitude in particular is helpful and maybe we can find some anomalies. We'll see. And so the probe, I didn't go with the xenon because uh, xenon and uh, the ion engine are very expensive and this is already a very expensive probe as you can see the probe itself is 43,000 and that's because of all the equipment on it so pretty expensive the solar panels I went with very expensive ones we'll have it do scans of Kerbin first before transferring it out so we'll probably want it in a somewhat inclined orbit around Kerbin not steeply inclined we might even transfer it to the moon first we'll see um, it doesn't have that much delta V, but we've, we've, we've already got a moon, moon uh, satellite, what am I thinking? So we've already got a polar satellite around the moon, Minmus is the one that we don't have anything around. But yeah, we could use it for multiple things because it costs so much, but in general, this is what I'm going to put into EVE orbit in that tighter orbit, not the loose one. This is too expensive to put into the loose one. No, you know what? Maybe we can transfer it to the loose one after we get into that tight orbit and fulfill that com well I don't know if that'll work I don't think it'd be happy with it I'm not sure we'll see uh, but uh, this is the first thing I'm going to launch I'm putting it on the sparrow because the sparrow is fully well it's not fully reusable it's uh, the lower stage is reusable the upper stage is not reusable but that's alright it will bring us back some funds out of this very expensive cost all right. Oh, I didn't explain. Uh, the telescopic pistons are to ensure that the solar panels don't bang into the instruments. The instruments, the way they spread out, tend to be fairly broad. So that's a thing. All right. So let's save. And we don't have to launch it right now. But let's launch it right now, keep it in current orbit, and then we'll transfer it whenever the appropriate transfer time for EVE is. All right. So let's launch. Okay. So here we go. Throttle up. SAS on, FMRS does not need to be on, and yep, looks like all systems are go. Let's make sure the engines are attached properly. Yes, they are. Okay, off 
punch cards. Oh, the com dish has punch punch cards as a thing. That's interesting. Didn't realize that. Okay, uh, off we go. I need to fix this though, because the fairings are dropping at the same time as the first stage set. They should actually be before that. So, in theory, we could refuel this probe. I mean, all we need is to send a Kerbal out there with uh, little KS uh, attachment points, uh, pipe end points, for instance, and then just refuel it. So, we don't have to waste too much cash. We could uh, then transfer it to somewhere else and scan for resources. So, one thing we have to do is get a Class A asteroid. Um, once I've launched the the Eve lander, the Eve probe that's going to land on Eve with a uh, heat shield and all, I think I'm going to look into that. Let's see if we can build a asteroid towing vehicle. You know what, we really do want some inclination on this to uh, get some some basic scanning done. I really should have started that off earlier, but uh, we can deflect a little bit here. Get some inclination so that we can scan a wider area. That's going to be tricky though, because we want to land the launcher close to the KSC. So, slightly inclined orbit, not a huge deal, but it'll be something. Should put uh, a polar orbit one around Kerbin. Okay, 116 by 103. Okay, that's shut off, let's separate. Okay, let us ignite this engine. Well, we don't need to do anything more just yet. Let's see, solar panels extend like that. This is the first time I'm using these solar panels. Yeah, they would probably, well, they would risk knocking the scanners. So let's have the little arms extend. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's activate all of our scanning devices. Make sure that electric charge is okay. Looks good. Yeah, let's give it some time. Let's bring down the the sparrow stage. So far at least uh, plenty of electric charge. No problems there. Not entirely sure where the solar panels are pointing though. Don't they seem to be opposite to you? Is this the solar panel surface? I guess so. Looks a little bit dull. Should be deeper blue, I guess. I mean that's just me. Let me let me do the retro burn first and after that decide whether I should change inclination. Okay, beginning re-entry will be in the high atmosphere attempting to correct the inclination. We'll have to spin around pretty quickly. Okay, get me retrograde please. Quickly, quickly. Let's see what our situation is. Definitely overshooting. I need to retro burn very fast. And that probably won't leave me with, with much fuel. So this might be landing in the water. That's the end of that. Okay, water landing, no thrust. 
Okay, full parachute deployment bringing us to 4.8 meters per second. Definitely survivable if the thing doesn't flop. Oh, recover. Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe I should have waited a little bit longer to see whether it would flop or not. Okay, that's the satellite launched, and so that will get into uh, the closer orbit around EVE and fulfill that contract. Let's take a look and see if there are any Class A asteroids. We've, we've got the contract, we gotta do something with it. Now oh, there's one. Uh, so let's track that. We got some time for that one. It's got 35 days until uh, encounter. Kerman Periaps is 16,000 kilometers. Very nice, actually. And that's the only Class A that we're, we've got coming in here. So that's pretty good. I'll take that one then. So we'll aim to grab that one and pull it into Kerman Orbit to fulfill that contract. Doesn't specify a specific orbit, so that's good. Maybe we can do something with it. Alright, uh, yep, now I'm going to build the EVE lander. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be our EVE lander. And quite different from our other designs for landers in particular, no lander legs. I don't think we really need a lander leg because once you uh, deploy a parachute, this thing is going to be going very slowly down to the surface. If not, we do have these little guys uh, waiting to soften our landing. And so we do have that going for us if, in the event that we need to slow down. Though it, they can't do too much. Yeah. But I don't think they'll need to with the parachute. It's not a free fall like the previous attempt was. So, yeah. Uh, we've got solar panels here, we've got extendable solar panels on the side, we've got batteries there. Everything is uh, within the realm of the heat shield, which is one of these Mark 1.2 pod heat shields, which are 2.5 meters in diameter. And you notice I decreased the amount of blade of shielding because I don't think I'll need the full thousand, and that's a lot of mass that we can save. In fact, I don't even think we need 500, maybe we'll need something more like 400-ish at most. So I'll go with that. If the heat shield blows up, uh, we'll still be well covered, I think. Um, yeah, so this is a fuel tank down here, and it feeds into these little uh, cylinders there, which feed the little thrusters there. No RCS. I tried to make it as cheaply as possible, so the actual cost of the probe is 9000 right now. Uh, that does include the scientific instruments, so not as much, uh, I didn't put the seismometer or the barometer, which would have been much more expensive. The seismometer, for instance, is 6,000, the barometer is 3,300. So I saved that, but I did add Science Junior and two goo containers, so hopefully that'll make up for it. Okay, so I think we'll package this up and we will send it out into space. So again, this is going to be waiting in Kerbin orbit while we get into the right phase angle for EVE, so it's not going to depart immediately for EVE. And yep, but that's fine. It'll give us time to do other things while having these ready to go at a moment's notice. And that's more convenient for me, I think, at this point. So here we go. Now one other option was to basically put the heat shield at the top of the probe and then have the thrusters so that the thruster would, thrusters would be free to fire without being angled out like they are on this. But I decided not to do that uh, because I wasn't sure how well I would be able to flip around in EU's atmosphere, right? Because if we're heading down heat shield first, we would actually have to flip around in order to get the thrusters pointed down. Uh, so wasn't entirely sure whether that was going to be doable or not. And that is why we aren't uh, doing a huge shield on top with thrusters facing the bottom and uh, that would be more efficient in terms of the use of the thrusters but I wasn't sure about maneuverability in EVE's atmosphere. Obviously the thrusters are also going to be used in orbit in order to get us into the right situation for EVE entry. 
there, the second stage of the sparrow is simply going to get us our transfer to Eve when the time comes. Okay, so we'll stop there. 118 by 92 and separate. I will activate this engine, thrust a little bit forward and let us extend solar panels. I forgot to action group these. Okay, sparrow return. Let's go for it. Okay, it looks like we're probably coming in too high. Okay, well let's not tempt fate by having the engines on while they're pretending to overheat. In stock this would be an okay trajectory, but uh, not too sure about far. I think the atmosphere is thin enough that this is going to overshoot. Well, I'm genuinely curious about where this thing flops in the water or not. I don't remember having tested that. Since we nabbed a recovery on the previous attempt, I guess I'll use this as an experiment to see whether or not we will flop. Okay, well it's flopping. How much will break? Eh, pretty much all of it. There's this part though. Well, let's recover this. Well, okay, it didn't show me the recovery dialogue screen, but that's probably because it's just debris anyway. So yes, uh, we managed to do the ghillie part of the mission. We didn't manage to get any satellite around EVE, but we've launched another mission in order to get at least one satellite around EVE, and we've launched a mission to get a lander on EVE to transmit scientific data back. So I think we've, uh, we've got quite a lot done in this episode. We've also found a Class A asteroid that we'll be able to bring into Kerbin orbit. So we've got a lot going for us, and in the next episode I'll ho hope to fulfill some of these missions. But uh, with that, I think that'll do it for me. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.